Do you like heavy armor, proc dependent character builds for PvP in the Elder Scrolls Online? Because if you do, this is a build you should consider. This is my Stamina Dragonite Battlegrounds build that I've been using for a number of weeks now. Uh, it's good in Battlegrounds and no CP primarily. I will go over champion points if you want to use it in CP Cyrodiil. I think it's okay there, but not quite as good as in the no CP campaign. Um, so let's get into it. This is an Imperial Dragon Knight with 64 points into stamina. Why Imperial? Um, you could use other races. I think Imperial, I have really been liking Imperial lately uh, for the stat density, health and stamina, as well as the cost reduction. I use a decent amount of magic skills on this build, and I think Imperial is really good for that, and it's going to get only better in the next patch because I believe they're taking the cost reduction, which applies to magic, stamina, and ultimate abilities. I, I believe the... Uh, cost reduction is going to be 6% in the next patch. It will lose the, the healing and resource return on attacking, but will gain an additional 3% in cost reduction to all abilities, which I think is really strong, um, plus the stat density right here. So I think Imperial is a good all-around choice for any stamina build. You could go Orc, Wood Elf. I've tried Wood Elf. I like Wood Elf too, um, but I don't play Orcs because they're fugly, and I don't care for that. Um, but... Um, no matter how good they are, I don't care. I will not be a monster, a hideous beast. Um, but anyway, I like Imperial. Um, choose a race accordingly. You would perhaps have to adjust your Mundus Stone food or glyphs if you were a different race. But it, I don't think it's that big of a deal to use a different race. Um, I think Wood Elf would probably not be as good, but it is doable. Um, we, are, we are using Bewitched Sugar Skulls and the Serpent Mundus for additional 310 recovery. This gives us... Every stat. Dragon Knights, you know, I, I do use a lot of magic skills, which I'll go over. I think the ma you could use something else, like everyone uses Lava Foot and changes their their attributes. I like the magic. I find the magic very useful. It's more fun playstyle. It's like it, I guess it suits my playstyle better to use the magic abilities and to have more magic. And then you get the health recovery. I'm not aware. I mean, I'm, Werewolf is irrelevant to the build, so just ignore that. Um, oh, as I mentioned, we are in... We are actually in a no CP Cyrodiil Sam can't no CP Cyrodiil campaign. So these are the stats you would actually see in a battleground um, on the front bar. Um, the stats are good and decent. They're not super fantastic, but we are using proc sets, so the stats are less important on a build like this. All points into stamina. You see, we have decent crit resist. Again, this is not with CP, so uh, weapon critical is irrelevant except for healing, and you can now guess why. I'll tell you later. Stamina recovery 1300 is fine we get sustain from our stamina recovery from our serpent monastone and from our if, in case you don't know you're new to dragon knights or the game we get a resource return from this passive every time we use our ultimate ability and i find that those three sources of sustain are sufficient you i do heavy attack occasionally but it's not critical to your sustain you should be heavy attacking anyway because it will, as you can see from this passive, we're using a two-hander. Heavy attacking will provide additional resource sustain, additional resource sustain, as well as buffing your damage. I like to heavy attack before leaping, but this this number in no CP of um, 1300 is is very adequate. I, I do not have sustain issues on this build. Um, I was going to say something else. Oh, potion wise, yes. Yeah, we are using tri-stat potions. I just, you can use any potion you want. I just find, again, this build is focused on using all three resources. Um, I like tri-stat potions. I always have, and that's what I use. But you could use other things. As far as weapon damage, I do just want to show you the maximum. We do have a weapon damage glyph. I'll go over gear next. Weapon damage glyph on the front bar. Dragon Knight has access to minor brutality, and because we're using a two-hander, we have major brutality. So to buff up, you would go major. We'll use the skill to get the miner, and then we'll proc our glyph, and we'll see that we go to about 3,200. Okay, so that's, again, no CP. Let's kill this fool. I'm very tempted to go get that Sigic thing over there, but I guess I'll do it later. Uh, you may have just realized what set I'm using, but um, we're going to go over the gear right now. Um, we are using two, uh, let's see. <clears throat> Actually, yeah, that, that's everything. Resistances, I'll just show you. Sword and shield back bar. 27,000 uh, spell and 
you know, so for no CP, this is a heavy armor build. This is a five heavy, two medium build. Um, and so those are decent resistances. As far as gear, we're using five pieces ash and grip active on the front bar only. Uh, this, I don't know that anyone's, I've never seen anyone combine the build like this, so I don't know if I invented this or anyone else is using this kind of stuff. I've, I've seen people use Ash and Grip, but not combined in the way I have it with the other set. But it, this provides health, damage, critical, again, which will only affect our healing, not our actual damage, um, because we cannot crit, we are using Malakath, as I'll get into in one second. So weapon critical is not terribly useful, but the main reason we are using, um, it, Anytime you do any type of melee damage, which is mostly everything we do, uh, you get this 5400 flame damage. And because it's mainly, I'm, I'm doing this build for no CP, Battlegrounds, the fact that it's flame damage, which is not, bo bo not boosted by stamina-based champion points, doesn't matter because we're not in a CP situation. It's every four seconds. It's AoE. It can set people on fire, which will then provide... Uh, additional magic return via the combustion passive, so your armor can set people on fire, provide damage, and then perhaps, it's not all the time, but you will get occasional magic return, which is nice because we are using some magic skills. So that's uh, set number one. Um, <clears throat> I go with a sharpened uh, two-handed maul for more penetration, maximum penetration. Nernhone would be fine. Uh, you get a little bit more healing, a little bit less damage, but I went for maximum damage. And again, on a Dragon Knight, you know, you have both brutalities. You want to probably stack weapon damage as, to as great an extent as you can. So I do go with the weapon damage glyph. Um, you know, use something else if you prefer. I find that we're using dots. I've, it buffs them for five seconds. I think that's a good, uh, a very good choice. Um, what else? So that's Ash and Grip, only on the front bar again. It's a craftable set, so you can ma make whatever traits you need. It's very simple, as long as you have a crafter who can put it together for you. Back bar, set number two is more Cooldown, which was the floating sword you saw a minute ago. Um, <clears throat> this is, um, let's go to the back bar. More Cooldown gives you stamina, a little bit of recovery, weapon damage, and then um, this has a basically 100% uptime. Uh, it lasts for 15, summons a sword for 15 seconds with a 15 second cooldown. Um, and it does damage, and I tested it. It's, I believe, if I'm if I remembering correctly, it, it hits the enemy every two seconds. So for four thousand, almost four thousand damage. Um, so this just provides additional pressure on your target. Um, you can't necessarily control who it's going to attack, uh, but usually it'll attack your target until they're dead or it disappears, and then it'll automatically choose an, another target after that if there's other enemies around. But I find it it's kind of fun. It's a little bit unique, and not I don't see it that often. Um, it just provides nice pressure on top of what you're already doing. Um, plus, you know, these, these are not bad things to have, stamina recovery. And it is craftable, so again, it's sort of convenient. Um, I've tried, you know, you can run a lot of different things on the back. Um, I've been wanting to try um, the Way of Fire set on the front with Ashen Grip or with more Cooldown. So Way of Fire might be something else to try. Or a lot of people are using Daedric Trickery on the back bar. I tried that actually with Ashen Grip. I didn't like it as much. It's just... The buffs are strong and nice, but it's sort of random and, you know, maybe you get major expedition when your opponents are all dead and you don't need to run anywhere quickly and it's kind of, you know, hit or miss whether those buffs help you at the right time or not. This is just consistent damage on your enemy right when you need it. One thing to note, it has to be a lighter heavy attack. When I first started using this set, I was a little confused because I would dizzy swing someone and the magic sword would not appear. It actually has to be a light or heavy attack, so just keep that in mind. You should be light or heavy weaving anyway all the time. So, but but if you don't get confused that you know your skills will not proc this, it has to be a light or heavy attack. As opposed to Ash and Grip, which can be either any melee uh, damage that you cause. So that's more cooled in. Um, I went with Powered and Sturdy. I think Powered is nice just to buff your Vigor. Um, you could use Nern Honed or Defending, uh, I think would be alternative choices. Um, powered may not be the best, honestly. I think I made this for a Warden initially, and I wanted to buff Arctic Blast or something. I don't know. But I'm sticking with Powered because it has been getting the job done. Um, I, do, I do like Sturdy a little bit of... I do block a lot on this build, um, so having that block cost reduction is nice. Um, and I like a little bit more health in the back bar, again, because this was for the Arctic Blast build, uh, health-based healing. So you could go Tristat, maybe, or Stamina, whatever you prefer. Enchants on the back bar will be cut in half, so I think a Poison is better. 
Poison on a Dragonite is nice again because the combustion passive that we just looked at. When you set something on fire, you get magic back. And this, when you poison something, you get stamina back. 500 of stamina. So I think a poison is the way to go. I like the plain double dots simply because I have thousands of them. You could use any kind of poison you want. But I think, again, more pressure. The, the purpose of more cooldown and the back bar, you hit them, you poison them, you got a double dot on them, you got a sword hitting them in the face. So you have a lot of pressure. You flip back to your front bar and try and kill them. That's how it works. Um, set number three. We have Ashen Grip, we have Morkulden, and then we have Blood Spawn. Now, I tried Balorg on this build quite a bit. I just do not like it. It's not up all the time. It's more situational. In no CP, you know, you leap, and a lot of times when you leap, the, page, the person is dead. So having, you know, all this nice stuff after you use your ultimate ability, I guess it does actually both the ultimate, so maybe my thinking is incorrect there. It would make your ultimate hit harder, but I don't know that you need it. And then sometimes it's up when you don't need it, and then it's not up when you need it. I find I found trying both out that blood spawn just it, it seemed to be more consistent and offer me more, especially in no CP where it's sort of easy to die sometimes uh, compared to CP. Having the resistances and the ultimate, the ultimate provides me with sustain when I use my ultimate and healing, and then it provides a little bit of stamina recovery. Not while you're blocking, true, but when you're running around, that's nice to have. Always a good thing to have a little bit more recovery. I just found that I preferred and did I did better overall in multiple battlegrounds modes and deathmatch and uh, flag stuff all those things I found I always did better a little bit better with blood spawn so you could use whatever monster set you like but I like blood spawn and it is sort of the classic it just feeds into the dragon knight's use of ultimate for sustain um, and then I'll go over the pieces in a minute but then we have one piece trainee um, you could go. I just happen to have Triune, and since I only have two Tri-Stat Glyphs, the Triune gives you essentially a third Tri-Stat Glyph, so I'm sticking with that. You could go Infused, whatever you want. Um, again, I like the magic and the health on the build, so, uh, but one piece, we just have a free slot, use a piece of Trainee. Um, alternatively, you could probably, you could do two Trainee and go with one piece Monster Set if you don't like the Monster Set, but I like having a Monster Set, I guess, and, and this just gives me additional raw health. Um, I did, uh, for sustain, we have a recovery glyph. I just found the sustain was a little bit too low without one recovery. Um, and I went with robust, because I don't think it needs to be infused. Bigger resource pool. Um, and then, um, you know, again, adjust your glyphs according to your race and your food. But this seems to provide, uh, between the Serpent Mundus and one glyph here, and the Battle Royal passive, and occasional heavy attacking, the sustain on this build is just fine. And then finally, yes, we are using the one ring to rule them all that just is too good to not use, um, especially on a heavy armor build. Infused weapon damage, ring of Malakath, which is why our weapon critical doesn't matter that much because we cannot crit. But it, this buffs, in case you do not know, it buffs all your attacks and it buffs the damage done by Ash and Grip, the damage done by your more cooled in sword, all your skills, all your attacks. It buffs the damage of basically everything. Proc sets are not buffed by stat increases, um, but they are buffed by penetration, which is again another reason why my max stats are not so important because they don't affect the proc sets. But my penetration, which is why I went sharp and maul rather than nernhound, buffs more cooldown and ashen grip um, in addition to the Malakath ring buffing them as well. So that's kind of the rationale as for why I set it up this way instead of some other uh, option or some other alternative. Um, so to go over the pieces again, I think we went over the jewelry already. We're using five heavy, two medium, um, so all impenetrable. Now that's another sort of issue. Impenetrable has been nerfed a lot, and you could argue that well fitted or uh, not for this build, sturdy would be the. I would go sturdy if you didn't want to go impenetrable for more blocking. I block all the time, and I use a skill that helps me with that. I still think impenetrable is good to prevent death from. Snipe spammers, Nightblade gankers, uh, incaps, bombers. I was killed today in a battleground by a Magicka Nightblade bomber using Soul Tether and Proxy Dead. So I guess my impen didn't protect me enough, but single target, you know, single attack bursts that crit can still kill you, even though a lot of people are using Malakath. So I still generally prefer Impenetrable, and I have seven impen here, especially in no CP since we don't have the um, resistant champion point available to us. But you could, you know, I wouldn't argue with you if you wanted to go too impen uh, or too well fitted. I'm, I'm sorry, geez, too sturdy and five impen or whatever you think. 
I have one sturdy here and that's it. If you wanted to go one or two more sturdy, that would be a reasonable thing to do, I think. Um, I have two tri-stat glyphs. These, you know, it would be better to have a head and chest and legs tri-stat maybe um, if you were crafting this anew. But I just have this from other characters and things. So I have two tri-stat. I have one tri-stat here and one tri-stat here. And then I have the triune glyph. And the rest is all stamina. Um, I did. Ha I have a gold maul, but I have not even golded out the rest of it. The, the game is changing again in two weeks with the new patch. So I don't know. Armor is changing and CP is changing. I don't know what's going to be good. So I'm not, I'm not going to spend any money on, on anything else right now. But um, go. Since it's all craftable, you should be able to make your small pieces, your medium pieces. My, uh, my medium, uh, my shoulder, and my waist, and go with heavy on the big pieces. Hopefully, you, since it's all craftable, you can kind of mix and match however you see fit. So that's basically the gear in the nutshell. In a nutshell, I think I covered everything. Um, let's go over skills. Um, the skill layout on the front bar is pretty not that revolutionary. Um, we're using a two hand. We are two-handed sword and board. In case that was not clear up until this point, we're using executioner. You, ha I think, on a dragonite, you know, you have to have an execute. Um, executioner is the way to go. Reverse slice would be your alternative. Um, if you wanted more AOE cleave, I don't. I think executioner on a dragonite. I tend to want to kill one person as quickly as possible to reduce the number of opponents I'm facing. Um, so that's what this is for, basically. Noxious breath, AOE dot, as well as big powerful debuff for both your yourself and your magic friends because it now provides um, spell resistance reduction in addition to physical resistance reduction which used to not be the case in the past you can also use this as a pseudo spammable because you know dizzy we are using dizzy swing but that has a cast time if you need to just spam something on a bunch of group you know in a battleground group if you run up on a group of people fighting each other you can just kind of spam the whole group a couple times with this debuff them all do some decent 40 4, poison damage put a dot on all of them it provides a snare um, these two skills noxious breath and venomous claw Provide a short duration, you know, a decent snare for three seconds. Helps you catch people who are running. Um, it does also pull night blades out of stealth, and it can set the poison status, which again provides stamina return. So it's a good skill. Um, you could use like Pierce Armor on the back bar to provide the same debuff. If you didn't want to use this, you could use um, this skill provides the same debuff plus the minor version of it for 9,000 uh, increased penetration. I have tried that and played around with it. It's a good skill. That's an option, but I like, I just prefer this. Um, it feels more natural. It provides the only AOE other than your ultimate. So, you know, I prefer this. You can play, play around with it. Um, we are using Dizzy Swing. I don't love the skill. Um, you don't even use it that often sometimes because your dots tend to melt people into execute range and you can just, you know, I'll show you the combo in a minute. You can often just execute and ultimate them, but if you do need a spammable and your single target spammable, this hits hard. It provides off balance, um, and it, which means you can then heavy attack for additional damage and resource return and stun them, or you can, you can stun them. Um, I thought if you hit them twice, yeah, if you hit them twice, it stuns them. <clears throat> or if you set them off balance and medium or heavy attack them, you can stun them. So it's sort of a stun. We have another stun on the other bar, but this is a good good single target spammable. The cast time can be annoying sometimes, but it's still pretty strong. Uh, bear in mind, we're not getting the exploiter passive um, in Battlegrounds, so the off balance is a little, not quite as useful as it might be in other situations. Venomous Claw, again, I like this skill. I like the dots on the build. For it. This is a heavy armor build with Malakath, so I think dots are nice. And this is one of the best single target dots in the game, I think, still. It automatically sets poison status, so you get that stamina back no matter what. The damage increases over time. Um, it does a, a, some initial damage and then a decent, ever-increasing dot over 14 seconds. So these are your two, you know, you want to apply these to everybody before you try to kill them. Um, rally, everyone uses this skill. It's too good not to use. It provides major brutality, 20% increase to weapon damage, 20% increase to your stamina recovery. Oh, I forgot to mention, yeah, so our stamina recovery does even go up even more than I said. Uh, so 50, you know, that's plenty of stamina recovery with Battle Roar. Um, but anyway, so this is, and it's your burst heal on the front bar. Very nice burst heal. Um, so, you know, that this skill provides a lot 
um, for for three thousand stamina, it provides you a lot of a lot of functions and features. The ultimate take flight. Um, the tooltip. I'm not gonna. You know, the tooltip. Obviously, we're it's a little bit low because we're in no CP. It obviously gets buffed by uh, Malakath, Major, and Minor Brutality. So I guess just for the sake of thoroughness, we will. Let's see. Okay, let's see how big of a tooltip we get. Major Brutality, Minor Brutality, and the Glyph. And it will hit for 14,000 about. Okay. So, you know, it doesn't hit the 24k that it hits in CP Cyrodiil, but it's still very strong. Um, if you don't want to use Take Flight, I would probably not play a Dragon Knight. I mean, you could use Dawnbreaker. Um, I, I, Dawnbreaker is a great skill, but it misses all the time, in my experience, even when people are, like, right in front of you. This is more fun, it's cheaper, it, uh, it's a gap closer, because Dark Dragonite is a little bit slow sometimes, and I, it's just, you know, if you're not gonna, the main reason I, I switched to Dragon, it has no cast time, which is huge to me, I, I, I find, uh, Cast time ultimates are just terrible. So, you know, if you're not going to use Leap, you might as well play a Warden, I guess. I don't, I wouldn't play a Dragonite with any other ultimate. It's just, it's just the best thing. It, and it, you know, it just hits hard, etc., etc. I don't know what else to say about it. Just use it. Um, back bar, <laughs> we, we have Fossilize. So I'm not using, I have never been a fan of using Fragmented Shield. You know, you're trying to, it provides Major Mending, which was nerfed, but is still nice. Um, it's just, you, you need to heal. Do you cat? You know, you got to cast this first, which gives you a useless shield. It's a complete waste. A, a thousand damage shield. Why? Why am I even? Why do I even have this skill on my bar? Well, I don't. So I got rid of that. Um, I don't think I need it. Um, it's just clunky and terrible. Very expensive drain on your magic. Just to buff. And you know, you're kind of the only reason you're casting it is to make your vigor, you know, hit harder. So. You know, use it if you want, but I'm not using this skill. Um, I've never been a fan of it, um, but it opens up other options, which I think Fossilize is a great skill. Another, why play a Dragon Knight? Well, I mean, there's not too many reasons to, because Wardens and Necromancers are probably better. Everyone, I mean, I guess they're better. That's the consensus of everybody in the world. Um, but Dragon Knight gives you Leap and it gives you Fossilize, which is probably, you know, the first or second best stun in the game. It's, um, it procs, so what does it do for you? Obviously, it stuns the opponent. A nice stun does a little bit of damage. It cannot be blocked. It cannot be dodged. And after um, after the stun is over, it roots them. So it's a really nice immobile, immobility crowd control skill. Um, and it procs, you know, since we don't have fragmented shield, it procs uh, this thing. It gives you the minor brutality that you need. You have to have some, you know, you, ha you really want to have some earth and heart skill on your bar. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on another key feature. Again, why play a Dragonite? Well, no other class has access to this. Uh, minor Brutality, so that, and it's for your group as well. And it, the, the Fossilize also provides Ultimate, and it provides Stamina. It's a magic ability, so it gives you 1,000 Stamina back. So I think the trade-off, getting rid of this, which I think is semi-useless, uh, that's just my opinion. I mean, a lot of people would disagree with that, I think. But they would want the Major Mending. I think this skill is better and it provides every benefit this one does and then some. So I like it, I love it, um, and it's great. So I use Fossilize. Obviously, you could use this instead and you could just count on your Dizzy Swing for stunning people and your Leap, or you could use some other Sword and Shield skills like Reverberating Bash or, or whatever you prefer. Um, the next skill is not uh, in any way controversial. I think every single Magic and Stamina Dragonite in the world uses this skill. Um, you could use the other morph, which provides you a completely useless damage shield, whereas this skill can at least um, activate a small, semi-useless AoE on the enemy. I think it's a little bit better. Um, and I don't think the other one sends the spikes out. I could be wrong on that, I forget. I don't like the other one, I don't remember exactly. But this can also pull Nightblades out of stealth. Other key feature of this, it provides your major armor buff, which every character needs. 6,000 additional physical and spell resistance. And then finally, even just as important, it provides this. Uh, you know, we don't have Fragmented Shield. 12% boost to your heal, 
to all your heals for the entire 20 second duration. So that's really powerful and another you know, thing that a Dragonite has that other classes do not. Buffs your Vigor, buffs your Rally. I believe it buffs your um, Battle Roar healing return, everything, um, you know. So it's just it's just an all-around. You kind of have to use it. You don't really have another option unless you wanted to use, like, Mighty Chudan or something. But I, I don't think that would be a good... Uh, that would be a losing trade, in my opinion. Resolving Vigor, standard stamina heal for every person in the world. Um, so you, you know, use it. Um, other option would be, I've played around with Green Dragon Blood, which, you know, actually, so let me, so use Vigor um, and, and your Rally as your heal. If you want another heal, so this skill is a flex spot, okay? Um, other options, people use Cauterize a lot. I've never liked, I have it morphed to, you could use this as well. Flames of Oblivion does provide a decent amount of damage as well as it would boost your critical healing, not your critical weapon damage because we're wearing Malakath. It scales off stamina, so you can absolutely use it on a stamina character. I've tried it, it's okay. I don't like Cauterize that much either. I don't think the heal is that strong, um, and it's not very reliable, and it costs a lot of magic. So I tried this for a while and dropped it. Um, other option for this flex spot would be Green Dragon Blood. This is a nice, you know, heal. Um, it provides a lot of buffs, minor vitality, that's nice. Uh, major fortitude and major endurance. You know, you can get them from a potion, but if you don't want to get them from a potion or you don't want to use your potion, it provides these buffs. Um, so I think this is a decent option as well, but it is quite expensive. I tried that, um, you know, it was okay. What I settled on was defensive stance. Um, this skill, and I use this on my Magic Dragonite as well, who uses a, a sword and shield back bar. This provides a nice, so it doesn't, you don't have to do anything, you can just put it there, and it provides, um, so I have um, block cost reduction from my glyph on my shield, or my trait, which is sturdy. I have, where's iron skin? I have 10% block increased damage blocked for being a Dragonite, and this skill then provides an additional 10% cost reduction and 10% damage blocked. If you also put 40 points in the champion point for blocking, you can increase the cost of blocking even further, which I do uh, for when I go into CP Cyrodiil. So I think this skill provides a, a very strong, as I said, I block a lot on this build. This skill, just by sitting here, lets me block even more and more often. <clears throat> it also can do this reflecting thing, which I have been really loving. Um, I'm going to post a clip where you'll see like some... Uh, Venom skulls or whatever flaming skull get reflected back at people. It reflects snipe, it reflects skulls, um, flame reach, all of that garbage that people want to spam at you. And it, it's only once, but this will surprise many people. You people will crystal frag themselves to death. You have enough stamina where you can cast it, you know, crystal frag, reflect. Oh, they're going to do it again. They're going to spam crystal frag. They're going to spam crystal frag on me. Boom, boom, boom. They just killed themselves. Okay. And they don't even understand what, what just happened because nobody uses this skill in PvP, in my experience. You know, I've, I've, I don't recall ever seeing anyone reflect anything back at me with it in my whole <coughs> four years of five years of playing this game. So it's kind of fun to surprise people like that and kind of catch them off guard and kill them. So use whatever skill you want here. Um, I like this, okay? Uh, next... Um, I'm not using forward momentum, I prefer this. Because I really, this build lacks speed. Um, if it was medium, you know, you might consider shuffle, but we can't use shuffle. This provides uh, two seconds of snare removal, two seconds of snare, Im snare immunity, as well as major expedition. The minor force is kind of irrelevant because we cannot crit with our damage. So you could argue this is kind of a flex spot as well. But it's really, it's great for, you know, you get taloned, rooted, whatever, snared. You're just chasing someone. I don't have a gap closer other than leap. But if leap is not up, this, again, why do we need Bewitch Sugar Skulls? Because we want to use this magic skill. We want to use Fossilize and we want to cast this whenever we feel like it. So I really like this skill on this build. Just provides the only source of speed and mobility, snare immunity, etc. Um, so you could, again... <clears throat> you could put Fragmented Shield here if you really wanted to, Cauterize, whatever you think 
Um, other options, you know, um, these are a lot of good skills here too. You could use a gap closer. You could use heroic slash for minor maim. Minor maim got nerfed, so I don't really like this skill. Minor heroism obviously would be nice. If you wanted to drop noxious, you could use pierce armor. You have some choices, but I, I've tried all of them and have settled on this. I just really think every build needs some sort of, you know, mobility tool, whether it's inherent, you know, maybe it's just using a bow for major expedition, but whatever. I, I just prefer, I find this very useful, especially if you're playing like uh, Battlegrounds and I don't love these capture the relic things and all that, but it is helpful when you want to run away and outrun people. Back bar ultimate, um, I still have not gotten access to shield wall. I think this would be better. Corrosive is nice. It's really, it's actually quite awesome. <clears throat> if you run up on a group of people capturing a flag in a battleground and you pop this, you happen to have this ready, you can kill them all in like five seconds. But it's so expensive that, you know, I wind up using my leap well before this is ever ready. So it's sort of really strong and nice, but it's just too expensive, I think, for what it does. So I will probably be switching to spell wall which is sort of similar in it provides a seven second window of automatic free blocking. That's, I'm talking about the morph, uh, this, the spell wall morph of shield wall. Once I have access to it, I have it on other characters. I think that'll be the best ultimate for the back bar simply because it's cheap rather than corrosive. You could use corrosive. And the other thing I would p potentially use would be this. Um, I don't even have that, you know, when you morph this, you would get 5% um, damage reduction from minor protection. <clears throat> it also got nerfed recently from 8. Um, so that would be, those are my three choices, I think. Um, temporal Guard is what the morph is called. Temporal Guard, Corrosive Armor, and the number one choice is probably Spell Wall, which I will, I'm still working to obtain. Um, so those are the skills. Um, and let me just show you, so the combo is pretty sort of self-explanatory, but you want to always, you want to have two buffs up at all times. Rally. Uh, by the way, when, every time Rally runs out, you get a big heal. If you cast it early, you get a heal, but it'll be a little bit smaller. The heal grows the longer you have Rally up. But you're getting that, um, you're getting that stamina recovery and that major brutality. So when you're going to go in on this dude right here buff up with this buff up with this if you think you're gonna be you know i don't cast um defensive stands like all day long i just kind of keep it on reserve if i happen to notice somebody snipe spamming me or crystal blasting me or i'm going into a a, a group of people and i think that's going to happen i might throw it on but it, it's not like a buff you want to you're gonna you don't want to be casting this every fight you'll run out of stamina very quickly so it's just there mainly for the passives and the occasional use but you want to have this up, this up. Usually what I do is, you know, maybe you run in with this, plus or minus. But you basically run in, light attack to proc more cooldown, fossilize to stun. Now you've proc'd your minor brutality. Swap to the front bar. Well, I would then apply my two dots. And, and then, <laughs> then they're dead. If they're still alive, you know, decide whether they're in execute range. Um, and either, you know, heavy attack... Heavy attack execute, heavy attack leap, if leap happens to be up. Let's see if someone can not die so quickly. Do this, 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 execute. Or the, the sword killed them for me, okay. My light attack wouldn't go off for some reason. So that's basically it, I mean, um, it's pretty, you know, you wanna, you wanna light it, get that light attack in to proc your poison and your more cooled in. Fossilize if possible, you know, if they have if they have immunity, you won't be able, but that will proc. You want to fossilize someone every 20 seconds to get minor brutality. It gives you the stamina return, it gives you the helping hands, the ultimate return. And I usually put on my uh, claw first because the claw does more damage the longer it's on. Either claw or venomous, um, <clears throat> claw or noxious breath, then the other one. And then hopefully by then they're either in execute range, leap range, or then, you know, dizzy swing as, as needed. And you want to try to, you know, weave your dizzies. And as you, you don't have to think about proccing Ash and Grip, because that thing will just proc just by itself. But more cool than you do have to remember to get a light attack off on the back bar every 15 seconds if you want more cool to be up all the time. If you run in on your front bar, 
I do, you know, sometimes you might forget, like, charge in, and you, oh man, I wish I had more cooled enough for that fight, because that would have been helpful. But um, that is basically it. <clears throat> That's the build. I'll post a battleground. I think I went 22 and 1 in a Chaos Ball match or something like that. Um, and that'll be up as well to see the build in action. Please feel free to ask any questions, and thank you for watching. Peace.